Okay, folks, let's do a little bit of painting here on uh, Saturday. Uh, well, it's noon. So, I right, did some painting this morning in uh, the wee hours. And uh, I'm going to try to knock out some more here. Now, we finished up these, uh, these Scottish pikemen. We already, we already finished those guys up. And um, we've already uh, gloss-coated them and flat-coated them. And now we're going to give them the final treatment of the brush-on uh, dull coat. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to roll into doing the start working on these uh, uh, Irish light horse. Okay. All right. So. All right. And... Um, we can put this off for a little bit. We've got uh, our beautiful work of art here. The, the paper there for the wet palette. So I'd say it's like a Jackson Pollock, but uh, mine actually looks like something. <laughs> Good morning, Kevin. It's early over there. Maybe nice. It's just as hot as here, except you're dry. This is uh... so. We went to the uh, the store this morning, and uh, I wanted to pick up a couple of things. And one of the things is um, is I talked about it earlier on the video is taking these Citadel paints and try and transferring them over to dropper bottles, and. Um, Good evening from Greece. Okay, perfect. Uh, so I wanted to take these and transfer to a dropper bottle. So I watched a couple of videos that some folks had done on there and wanted to uh, see what their impressions are. So I wanted to get some dropper bottles and also some of the uh, airbrush thinner. Neither one of the two things that they had at the hobby store. But I did pick up some more of the brush on dull coat. So even though they changed the packaging, this is what it originally looked like. I bought the, the one I use, I had bought it a long time ago. That's this one right here, flat, clear, lacquer finish. And they, Model Masters going, Testers is going through some weird stuff. They've been bought out by Rust-Oleum and they've, discount, they've uh, discontinued some of their fig painting lines and adding other ones. But this is the same type of uh, milky clear. So we're gonna use up all this and then we're gonna end up going to this one, but. Um, yeah, some model masters, like the model master acrylic that I use, they no longer make the flat black in it. And well, I only use that for the, uh, for the, uh, the primer, but anyways, so, um, we, they didn't have it at the store, so we Amazoned it. So we should be doing, uh, well, I don't know if we'll do it live, but we're going to transfer over these metallics, uh, over to dropper bottles because what's happening is, um, I'm getting a lot of goop in here and she would be. You know, that'd be way overstating it, but uh, I figured we'd give that a shot. So, yeah, the store, I think they only had four packs of them. They weren't even Vallejo brand or anything. They were just some kind of generic, crappy-looking ones. And um, those were, uh, I think they wanted like $7 for four bottles. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm not doing that. So I Amazoned 50 bottles for 13 bucks. So a little bit better deal. So hopefully they're uh, not crappy, but you know, it's kind of a catch 22. I'd rather go to a store and buy them, but if the store doesn't have them, then I have to mail order them. And uh, they'll be delivered tomorrow um, on a Sunday. So supposedly Amazon's pretty accurate with their delivery estimates, unlike the post office, which is uh, one of my beefs today is I have uh, the Knights for these uh, for the Scots. That's probably what I would have done next is Edward the Bruce's uh, uh, stand, but they're not in. I got notified by email that they got mailed on the second and on priority two-day mail. So um, the second was a Tuesday. So they still aren't here and they've been sent to the distribution center. So they're taking their getting here uh, I was going to do an unboxing video on a three-day weekend not having to wait until a work day 
to do when I'm rushed to do an unboxing video. So, but I know how it is. Anytime I count on anything for the post office, I get disappointed. So, hey, they'll get here whenever they get here, and I got plenty of stuff to work on. But anyhow, so we're just going to give these guys uh, a once over here on uh, the brush on just getting the extra protecting and um, and the extra flat added to them. So these need to dry and then uh, after these guys are dry we'll be able to mount them. So let's just move these guys way out of the way. So sorry about the knights. They'll get here when they get here apparently but they're um, they got mailed from Michigan and they went to the Jacksonville Distribution Center, which is about an hour and a half from me. They arrived there uh, at dark 30 yesterday morning and I got a notification that they still, um, they're still in Jacksonville. So there's somebody sitting on their ass not getting you guys the product so I could do an unboxing on them. But you know, we'll do that whenever they get here. It's just frustrating. I guess that's the problem with knowing about uh, getting notifications. If I didn't get all those notifications, I wouldn't know I was getting screwed. <laughs> oh, well, it's not like we don't have anything to work on. So we're going to work on the light horse first. So. This is actually pretty thick. I'm afraid of, of fitting this at all, but This takes that last little bit of shine off of it. Plus it gives it some extra protection, so. The only catch with this stuff is you can't go over any spot that you just do, or it'll pull the paint. Because if you guys know, I paint very thin layers, so. Um, I guess I could thin this stuff down a little bit, but. I'm just going to roll with this this way. And if I miss something after it dries, I can reapply it. But I picked this up a long time ago and they decided to give it a try. Um, one of the painters that I follow um, mentioned that he did a brush on flat treatment. So I'm like, well, I got this stuff. Let me try it. And it really worked wonders. So uh, I'm sold on it. It wasn't necessarily this brand. It was... Uh, something else that uh, it wasn't readily available here. You know, there's some parts of the figure I don't mind having a little bit of a shine on them, like the metal and stuff, but uh, clothing and stuff, yeah, unless he's wearing silk, uh, that's just not really appropriate. This just takes a little bit and we'll, uh, we'll wait a couple hours for this to dry and um, and then we'll start assembling these two Scott's pipeman stands. Yes, the thing with this is I'm used to pretty much, unless I'm doing something like these stages that I'm doing right now, I can pretty much go from one thing right into the other. I don't have to wait for, for things to dry or what have you. So um, that's kind of unusual. Always leave yourself something to work on. So you're not, um, you can still be painting. You're just uh, painting on, you're just working on some other stage of it. Okay, we'll leave that alone. And I have a lacquer thinner that I only use to clean this clear stuff because I don't want it to be contaminated. I don't want any color in here that could possibly get on the brush. I don't know how many uses this is going to be good for, but this is all we use it for. And this is a brush that I only use for this clear because I don't want any, any coloration to get in here. And next thing I clear coat, uh, 
the figures would say a little bit of black or something in there and darkens them. So, um, okay, all right. So on to the light horse now. These light horse figures are by um, QRF. I did an unboxing video of them. That's a quick reaction for us. We're gonna move our little uh, our little wet spot up here where it's not gonna interfere with us. Um, and these are actually, so they're by QRF, I did an unboxing, there's an unboxing video here on my channel on uh, what these guys are. I've got a variety of different poses, and uh, this is out of their feudal uh, range. They come four figures to a pack, which is perfect because I needed to get um, uh, two stands of just uh, good old boring light horse out of the way. So um, these are actually Welsh, they're considered Welsh light. Uh, cavalry, but since the Welsh army of this period in DBA has no light cavalry, uh, and these guys look exactly what I've seen um, the Irish horse to look like, which means basically no, no helmet, uh, no armor, barefoot, and no frills, this is exactly uh, the perfect figure for it now. So, uh, okay. Um, let's make sure we don't have anything. Da, 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 da. All right, let's go back here. Uh, you don't like spray on clear coat. Yes, I do. So these figures, when they're done, they have uh, a clear gloss 24 hours, like a couple of hours. Then they get uh, spray flat. Then after that's dry, I do brush on flat. Um, and it makes a big difference. It sounds like it's overkill, but... Um, it looks a lot better. It takes all the shine off of them. Um, it just evens everything out and it makes them look better. So, um, so three clear coats on them. Kevin, uh, just getting in. What top coat are you using? Okay, so yeah, it's a, I don't have it here anymore. It's just Model Master Gloss, Model Master Flat, and then this brush on um, stuff here, which this is flat, clear, lacquer finish. Uh, in the States, well, at least in the store that I got it from, they no longer have this one. They have just testers. At one point, they had testers and Model Master split off of them. Model Master was the higher end, uh, more quality type thing, but I'm not sure that's the case. You know what? This is getting sticky. Let's let's lose this one. That's why we got lots of these. We'll save this one for later after it dries up a little bit. We don't want any boo-boos getting sticky stuff everywhere. Let's see if we can find one. I love this cardboard. This is just the backs of uh, pads of paper. It looks like I need some more. Well, we'll use one with stuff on. Oh wait, do I have one with nothing on it? Perfect. And that is distracting. Okay. All right, so while those guys are drying over there, let's start working on the Irish Light Horse. Now, as promised, I was going to replace this thing. You know, my work of art is gone, so um, we're going to just put a new one, and this is, uh, we'll probably end up having to replace it after these guys. So, let's, uh, how many of these do I got? I guess at some point I'm going to have to reorder these. And it came with 50 of them. I've probably used maybe 15. I don't think I've used that many. Oh, there's a ton more. I got, I got at least 30 more of these. So we just take our pre-cut little. And I'm going to show you guys how I do it. Because somewhere out there, there's somebody that couldn't figure out how to lay this thing down. And you just have to be persistent. It's not that, it's not that big a deal. So this is just pre-cut, and I guess you could probably use uh, parchment paper, but this is already pre-cut. Just lay it down. Look at that. Now, you see how the edges start rolling? You just go in there, and you just tell them, look, you son of a bitch, you lay down. You just got to talk dirty to it, and it'll, it'll listen. <laughs> That's it. No big deal. Blam on. All right. So let's set up our black white these guys definitely go in the middle oh put these guys up and 
And that's just, I put them in the middle because I can access them from all sides because I end up working around it. And some people claim that you can save a lot of paint by using the wet palette. I don't think, that, in my case, you don't, you only save it because I don't have to keep bringing new colors out. I can just keep using the ones on there. So the first horse we're going to do, we're going to do a good old plain uh, brown horse. We're going to use this leather brown for more painter. I could use one of the other many browns I have. We're just decided to do this one. And uh, mix this one up here. Let's move these Scott's pikemen. Okay. Let's lose the glasses so I can see. Whee! Okay. That was unintended, by the way. All right. If I could just get in the habit of putting my paints away, I want to pull it out. I won't be encroached in there. I think every time I paint one of these figures, I'll have like 12 to 16 bottles that come out. All right. Motivation brought to you by Coke Zero, as always. That's Coke Zero and black cold coffee. One of these. This one. Maybe this one. All right. Off we go. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create our big shade. The one that we're going to cover the entire figure with. Really glossy because I don't know why. This is supposedly flat black by, um, by Model Master. Enamel. I didn't want to use the spray. I had kind of a, a bad thing happen with the spray last time. And uh, I think I sprayed from too far away. I didn't want to cover over the details and I got a grainy finish. So I wanted to make sure that we did not have that happen this time. Oh, this is strange. Why is this? Why are the bristles hard on this one? There we go. All right. Uh, black. Grab some of this. Grab a little more. All right, we're just going to cover this entire horse in this. Now, this horse doesn't have a whole lot of detail. So I know one thing that the last time I was painting my, my, uh, my Saloy, my skirmishers, some of them had some shields, and some folks wanted to know how I painted the shields, and I couldn't really do it because I was in between looking at it on my phone and filming it. I can't look for, uh, I do the nights. I wanna make sure that those shields, uh, we do that live so you guys can see what, uh, how I do it. It's not that big of a deal. The whole thing is just take, just break anything down into a series of lines. Because when you're painting things, they're detailed with a brush. What I've found is a lot easier if you break down everything in a series of lines, um, just to kind of, uh, you know, fill them in later. It's, it's really pretty easy, so. All right. That's at least what works for me. I'm thinking. We gotta wait for the figures to come in so see exactly what I'm dealing with. So for this army, we've got two more things that are, that are shipping into us that we do not have. The first thing is, is the knights, it's for our knight, for our Scottish knight stand. And the next thing is uh, the flags from Little Big Man Studios. So, got some Irish flags coming from that. And um, yeah, the only catch with this is I had kind of not expected things to take as long to get here as they have. And a lot of it is uh, shipping things is just taking longer. Uh, I don't know whether it's a reduction in workforce or I'm not really sure what it is. Uh, and then the manufacturers are taking longer to spit things out, and that's definitely due to uh, a reduction in workforce. And I understand everybody's busy. I guess the hobby industry is kind of, um, they're, uh, the people that are in that industry are, uh, are manufacturers still stay in business. So um, let's, uh, okay. <laughs> Do 
you find humidity in Florida, you're in Florida, right, affects paint and top coat dry times. Now, it, I've lived here my whole life, so it doesn't seem like it's much of a deal. I've, I've heard people have horror stories about their uh, gloss coats and stuff like that uh, fogging up. I've never experienced it, thankfully. Boy, I'd be pissed. Because I'm, you know, like these Scots, I sprayed them all at once. So that's 50 hours of work or something that I sprayed once. So if it would have ruined, I would have ruined 50 hours worth of work. Yeah, that wouldn't have been good. Hasn't happened to me yet. And it may have to do with something. Um, I keep my spray cans in the garage and I spray out there and, uh, and try to spray with the, with the door open. Um, so they're not changing temperature. So in other words, they're already at 70 something degrees and then uh, they spray at that same degree. So maybe the people are experiencing uh, the cloudiness because they bring their spray cans in here to a cooler temperature and then they warm, I don't know. I'm not sure what, what the reason is, but I thankfully have never experienced that. That would have been very, that would have made me very sad to spend that kind of time on them and then be ruined by that. So, all right, we're just gonna lighten this up a little bit. And I don't know if you could tell on this, but these, these paints aren't covering as well as a Vallejo would, but they work just fine. They're, uh, they're just, they have more of the, of the, of the acrylic uh, flow in them, not less pigment. So they're not my favorite. I just decided to got, get them for a variety of, for just to have a variety of, uh, of brown colors. They got some extra browns and I think some off-white type colors from them. They had them at the show, so let's go, a, let's go a little bit smaller brush here. There we go. Here for them a whole lot. The Danish paints. Citadel, although the problem with Citadel is Are they back to being called Citadel or Games Workshop? Whatever, you guys know what I'm talking about. Those damn Game Workshop paint. The problem with us, we only have, we have two of them in town. And um, they frequently keep a very bad stock of them. They don't re refill them. So sometimes they, uh, they won't have, I'm not sure whether they're just slow in stocking them or lots of places are out or there's not that many people that are painters. So they don't. I know that I know what most people don't paint, so and I haven't decided how far up of this horse we're gonna go, whether we're gonna still keep them kind of dark or not, but you know, you could just kind of wing that stuff. I don't try to do a whole lot of planning. Um that's just kind of my my style, so not on uh on the horse color, anyways. Kelly says, I wish I had invested in Vallejo instead of Army Painter. Okay. Well, um, I kind of got mine for free. And what I mean by that is I took some, I took a hobby thing I wasn't using that I hadn't used for decades, sold them all, and bought a ton of Vallejo paints. But, you know, that's all. Um, yeah, the Army Painters don't cover very well. But for, which for my paint, painting style is, is okay. It's not an issue because I build them up in layers anyway. So, um, but I can see other people that want to finish like in one, one coat. Yeah, it kind of sucks. Acrylic medium. That's what I'm thinking of. That's, that's what they have a lot of. They just behave differently. Um, so... Now, one thing that's gonna get me interesting to try is I picked up some of the Vallejo um, airbrush thinner that I saw people were, were adding some drops to their, to their Games Workshop paints when they were transferring to, uh, from one pot to another. So I may try using that instead of water as a little bit of a thinner. Maybe I could put that somewhere here and see how that behaves. Um, I've got some of the flow improver, but it doesn't really do anything. It's I try doing that with if I'm doing something that's that has that's very detail painted, but I'm not sure if that even that might be more psychological for me. I'm not sure that that made any difference, but 
extreme. Like, for instance, instead of using water, I could use distilled water. I mean, come on, you know, I just, I'd rather have you know, this free thinner that just freely flows from the, uh, <laughs> from the faucet. And it works just, uh, it works good enough for me, you know. But I've got that stuff coming supposedly tomorrow, so we'll, uh, maybe we'll give that a shot. But Tony does have friends that paint. Yes, just you. You're the one guy. <laughs> uh, I actually had a really cool opportunity to do something last historic on. I don't mean this year, but the year before. The one you went to, Joe, as well. So uh, you were doing something else at the time. You may have walked around with me, but uh, I got to walk around with uh, Mitch and look at stuff. And I got to walk around with another guy that painted and painting or any of that kind of stuff. But we were looking at tufts and... It was kind of cool, you know. It was kind of cool walking around with somebody who's who does painting stuff um, and looking at other painting type products with them. So that was that was a nice experience. I've never gotten a chance to do that ever before. Uh, I've been like the lone painter. So. Yeah, it used to be back in the day the 80s, everybody painted. And now, like, rarely anybody paints. Um, at least in, you know, the people that I game with. What's the... I see. This horse actually has a good face on him. I don't know how old these molds are or when these castings are from, but I think they're pretty good. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm out of frame here. Hold on, let's, let's straighten that out a little bit. Hopefully, I, I assume you guys want to look at what I'm doing, not just listen to my damn monologue. <laughs> Otherwise, I could just do a podcast. <laughs> oh, this is just mainly to keep me on, on station painting. I don't know how old these molds are, but they, um, but they, uh, they look good. These, uh, they have a nice look to the figures. They gotta be from like the nineties. So And these are very comparable with Essex size miniatures. Although I like these horses better than that. I'm not a fan of Essex horses. I think they're too well fed. They look very similar to the paintings from like the um sixteen hundreds. Like the 1600s, of, they look, the Essex horses tend to look a lot like that, like really well-fed horses. Now, the only catch with these guys is I may have to paint some mustaches on them because it looks like these guys are clean-shaven, so... No big deal. We'll see what I can do with a face when I get to that point. All right, so now we're kind of a medium brown. Let's just go straight this color here. Yeah, there's another paint brand that I could. Reaper. I picked up a Reaper, and that was really kind of watery as well. I didn't care for them. I've tried several different ones. Used to have some a bunch of Howard Hughes. Those dry up like nobody's business. I don't think I have a single one of those alive anymore. Um, but, you know, the, I like the Viejos because, mainly because of the bottle. And they have a good blend too. But I still, my, my favorite are still these guys right here. They coat the arms. They cover the best. And they may be the same as the Foundry System ones. But there's no foundry system available anywhere near here. So I don't, and I really don't want to mail order paints. It's, buying paints, unless you need them, is kind of on a whim. You know, you go somewhere and you're like, oh, let me look at the paints. Oh, it looks like a cool color. I'll pick up a bottle of that and see how I like it. It's, it's difficult to go and, you know, and just drop a couple hundred bucks on paints. You just pick them up by the one, by the each as you need them. So at least that's the way I, I happen to do them. So. The fact that they're not available in a store is kind of a 
Same thing with brushes. I'm not going to mail order brushes. I don't want to buy brushes sight unseen because they're all different. So. And there's probably a lot quicker way to paint horses, but I actually enjoy this. The muscles and stuff on here are, um, and I find them enjoyable. This is very relaxing. The slow buildup of the of the of the muscles on the horse and stuff. So. All right, let's uh, let's go ahead and highlight this guy up. But let's uh, let's not do it with white. Let's do it with uh, let's do it with pale. No, you know what? Let's get crazy. Let's add this uh, dark sand vallejo. Let's add a little bit of that and see what happens. The thing is, I paint so thin. So if I the odd chance that I come up with something I don't care for. It's really easy for me to repaint, and I don't cover up over any of the details because they're so thin. So, let's get some maintenance here to do here. Let's go. Okay. All right. All right, so we're going to take the main color here. Let's put it over here. And a little bit of this, too. the bottom part of the legs to kind of fade into darkness. I did one of my notorious sins that I always do is I forget to paint the ears. I get so excited about painting his face, I didn't paint the ears on. No big deal. Just come over here and hit the ears. Full of money. Okay? So these are pretty... Uh, they're not going to have really fancy... They don't even have shoes on. So... And we'll go back and do the uh, the mane of the horse afterwards. And the reason why I do that is because this part of this the mane here, as I turn it around, I always end up scuffing it up. So I don't want to scuff up something I've already painted. That I know it's going to be kind of like a dark color anyway. So it doesn't really, I don't really need it there for the point of, uh, of uh, being uh, distracted. So um, let's see, he's got barren legs. He's got barren arms and a face. Um, I don't need to do the straps or anything yet. Let's, um, all right, so I, I took some notes. I took some notes. I looked through my reference book, The Armies of uh, Feudal Europe and Western Europe here, and I said, I had an example here of a guy with a gray hood and cloak, and then saffron blue or red tunics. I don't, I don't like any, I don't like any of those ideas. And this was just from a, from one particular um, 
one particular engraving or, or something. So I'm, I'm not going to make his tunic red. That just doesn't seem right. Um, so let's start off with a basic guy. Let's go ahead and do a saffron one, okay? We're going to give him a saffron tunic, uh, like the million of other guys that we painted. Um, you know, again, some things are like, you know, go with ideas, and sometimes you just got to go with your gut. And uh, I don't want a red tunic guy. It's just going to send the wrong uh, message. Now, how are we looking on these scots? So this is kind of dry. I guess. Let's, um, let's wait a little bit longer and then we'll screw with them. I want to see how they fit on the stand. All right, so let's get our uh, green ochre color. All right, and uh, I thought I had another. I had, thought I had another paint brush that was small. Oh, this one. Okay. Let's use this one, and let's paint his tunic. We'll worry about the cloak later. Come in here, and I can use brown, but I want to use black with this one, and. There's not a whole lot of it showing, just some there. Some here. Actually, it looks like he's got sleeves. We'll paint sleeves on. Some of these castles, you gotta figure out what exactly they're wearing. Some are more challenging than others. That's it. That's all the that's all of the tunic that seems to be showing. All right. So let's uh, add more of the base color here. You know, I don't want the general, the light horse general, to be extremely bright. So if I make these guys super bright, I've got to make the general even brighter. And that kind of throws into um, a spin what I'm going to, uh, how I'm going to paint them. So that's just something i got to keep in mind. You don't want these commoner guys to outdo the, the nobleman that has the... All right. I should use a different water cup. I've had this water cup, let's see, probably since my daughter is five, so I've had it for like two. <laughs> Talk about recycling. Little kitty cup from Moe's Southwest Grill, so I'm probably at least 10 years old. Right, and then just go straight this. Yeah, a little bit of white to it.
Okay, we'll leave that as is for now. All right, now, since it's such a predominant part of the, of the, um, of the figure, we'll go ahead and do flesh now. Red leather, sunny skin tone. this out here so we'll have it. put something else out here to remind myself that's not the one that's not the one that's the one that's what we're going to do next after we're done with this guy's face okay these guys apparently didn't use stirrups either and sometimes they had um, ah, that's the word I'm thinking of um, spurs, but they used them or spur type things, but they used them. They just attached them to their feet. Well, we're not gonna we're not gonna paint those. Up. Okay, we're just assume that uh, these guys are just going. Barefoot. All right, let's see what we got face wise here. We won't give this guy facial hair. We'll do it. Uh, we'll do a test on that. And the test, I mean, is let's see what this guy even looks like. Because sometimes this detail is kind of faint on this figure. I, if I paint any facial hair, I'm going to have to paint something that doesn't exist, which is okay. But it's just something to take into consideration. Okay, and then we have a hand over here. Carrying this javelin kind of overarm. Okay. Nothing new, I'm putting everybody to sleep. Oh, new question. What do we got here? Um, glue them together first or work them separately? Always glue them together. The reason why is I don't want to do all this work, seal them, and then have to do some glue, and then you put the figure down, and some of the glue ends up squeezing out, and I've got to repaint over that, or it might ruin something. So I just I would rather just cover it up um, initially. That's um, And same thing. If he's got, like, separate shields, just glue the darn shield on there. I can... I can reach anything that I can see, so um, that's just me. I, I want to do all the gluing first. Um, that is, I've, I think I tried doing the separate thing one time and it didn't work. It just flat out didn't work. 
All right. Uh, all right. Let's add some of this color here. Well, Tony does it this way. Well, whatever. You know, find your own way to do it. I'm not. I don't need to convert it to anybody. You know, if you like Essex horses and I don't paint Essex horses, you know. I don't, I'm not interested in converting people, you know. You, you like what you like, that's cool. I got no beef with it. All right, and these four figures are exactly the same pose, exactly, so. Not sure if I'm gonna have to paint eyes on these guys or not. I hope I don't. I'll do it if I have to, but I'm not a fan. Because they're always out of scale. Nothing I could do about it. All right. <laughs> what I really hate, speaking of two part, I've only encountered this one time. I had some figures that were from a Russian company, not Russian, a Polish company, and I think they've sold the molds to somebody else now, but they were called Osmiol, and they were Polish, uh, they were Polish, the later Polish army, so like the ones from the Battle of, uh, is it Tannenberg? I want to say it's Tannenberg in 1410. They, I think they only made two armies. They made the Teutonic Knights from 1410 and the Polish Lithuanians from the same battle. They're beautiful figures. They reminded me of maybe like a Merleton style, but more lankier. But anyhow, the alloy they came in was super, super hard. It was, I, I used to joke that it was made out of melted T-55 tanks or that they didn't need anymore. They were almost as hard as an X-Acto knife. So when you, um, when you tried to clean the flash over one, off of it, it was, uh, it was a nightmare. But anyhow, the horses were two part, even the regular, um, even the regular knights. So you'd have a, a knight that would have like one half of the horse, and you have to put the other half together, kind of like you have to do with the Essex elephants. And um, yeah, there was there were a mess. I never built the army. I ended up selling it to on eBay. The hard alloy was just too difficult to work with. Now I understand those molds have now been bought by. I want to say they're fight, it's Fighting 15s that has them. I could be wrong, but somebody else makes them. And uh, I bet that they changed the, the alloy that they poured in there. But they were nice figures. There's nothing wrong with them other than that alloy that was in it. And a two-part horse probably wouldn't have been bad had it not been so hard. Um, but I'm not a fan of that. Uh, I'm not a fan of those S6 elephants also that are that are in two halves, but... I use epoxy, so I've never had one come apart. But you do have to do some gap filling or whatever, so it doesn't look really weird. But um, that's just how they decided to to, to uh, put them together. But no big deal. I guess I should have kept those Polish figures. But they wouldn't be the ones I'd do next. I do have some Polish knights that I picked up. Uh, I don't know where the hell I grabbed them from, but they're old Falcon figures. And um, if I use them, I'm going to have to replace their lances because their lances are, are very frail and bendy. And they're decent looking knights. I want to say I got four or five packs of them in some different poses. So there's an army that's on my short list that I would be able to use some of those on, but. Um, I think Falcon figures are not available right now. Okay, I think we need. I think we need to go to a different brush. You know what? This is burning a hole in my life here. I, I'm dying to. I'm dying to. I'm going to set this Irish horse for a side, and uh, you know because I don't destroy easily. I will. I will prove that. <laughs> Put this away for a second. And let's take a look at these pikemen. See how these pikemen are doing. 
Now, one thing I do with stands that are particularly tight, like these pipemen, that's what this is supposed to remind me, by the way, is I will go in and I will paint the base color that the ground is gonna be in. Because when I put the goop down, I don't go all the way underneath here all the time. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and, um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that on these. And then by the time I'm done the last one, I should be able to pop these guys off and we'll start putting them on the stand out. The day come out, yeah, this guy's got no shine to him at all. And that's why I do that final, same thing with this one. Yeah, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, I guess I'm gonna have to put it on a wet palette. You know, in a perfect world, I would finish these guys before I'd start working on any light horse. But, uh, you know, due to drying time, I can't do that. So the fact that I'm going back to these really is the more natural order. This is why I should be finishing first before I go on to the light horse. But if we're going to have to wait on the uh, drying time, then you got to wait on the drying time. So I don't have to use a tiny brush. We're just going to use this straight. And um, this is the color thin this down a little bit this is the color that when i put the ground coverage it will be that same color now the purpose for this is when i put these four guys on a stand there's going to be hardly any room to maneuver in i don't have to paint the sides that's going to get buried in the ground material but that just makes it a lot easier to get that um get that color all the way up to them without painting up on the side of the figure. And this is, it's an easy little process. Can't remember if I did that on the blades because they're really tight. They're, they're tight side to side. Every single one of those guys is walking all bow legged, seems like, so. And these are the gladiator figures from the Scottish Pikeman range. Might be the only Scots figures that they make. Scottish Pike, but I don't know if they make Scottish bows or they certainly don't make Scottish knights. Our knights are all kind of generic, more by time period. But it's funny, I got some of their horses. Some of their horses are really funky looking. They got huge heads and stuff. So, if you, um, this, these later medievals have funky looking uh, horses sometimes. And this is just a small step that could save you some trouble later on. Two more. Last one. So like when I'm painting, when I put these these two light horse, when I go and do them, I would not do this step because it's pretty easy to get underneath a horse's legs if there's only two horses on the stand. It's the same size stand wheel. You got three horses on the stand or two. So it's pretty, pretty easy to get it with just two. Um, okay, so these guys are done. Now we'll let them dry a little, little bit, and then we'll come back to them and um, and glue them on two 15 millimeter stands. And I know you can put them on 20s. I don't like how they look on 20s. I like them to look tight. So I also like them being compatible with other rule sets that use them on 15s as well. And all my other figures were on 15s, so I like how the solid infantry looks all together.
All right, where we leave off this little light, I needed to fix it. I needed to uh, put another color down, anyways. So now let's see what this eye situation is. We're going to try to push forward without having to do um, his eyes because I don't want him to look all googly. And there's always some looks of some sort. So let's go ahead and do this. Sunny skin tone. And let's put some toes down here. Because if he's going to be barefoot, I want to make it look like he's got at least some toes. Same thing over here. Some people hate painting faces. I don't mind it because it brings the guy to life. Um, Now I've seen people do faces by um, just adding like a wash or something like that. And I've seen other people's examples of work with that and it looked pretty good, but it's not really for me. I'm kind of past that point. I find washes too uncontrollable. You know, I want the shadows where I want the shadows. So, and, uh, and I don't want the drying time. I mean, one of the things I don't like about putting the known oil on some of these metallic parts is I can't just roll right into layering on top of it. I got to wait for it to dry a little bit. Well, this guy's leg looks a little bit like Ziggy, and that's not a good thing. Uh, that's just a casting. I can't fix that. So, um, all right, are these things dry? Yeah, they're dry enough for me. I'm, I'm impatient, so I want to I want to mess with these Scots before we finish this guy. So we'll move him back. We got to switch colors anyways. Let's cover this up and see what we're dealing with here with it with a pipe in. Now, I glue these guys to the stand using super glue. It's not very difficult to get out. I've just always done it that way, so. Make sure we don't have any new things here. Uh, gotta go do some shopping with a missus. Catch you later. You bet, Joe. Okay. Now let's do a final check before we, um, to make sure that we don't have any parts that are sticking out. Okay. We want to make sure these two stands fit flush up against each other. Looks a lot better that way. Quality control check on that. And we'll pop these guys off. Now we haven't made a decision on who's going to be on what stand yet. That'll be the next step. So, um, all right, just come right underneath here and just pop them off. And I have a plastic thing here that I collect all my bottoms. We just drop them right in there and it'll get recycled and we'll use them next time. So this one here, just pry it up, pop.
And this is super glue, so it comes off. And this is gel type super glue, so it's got some uh, it's got some substance to it. That guy really came off real easy. I can only imagine if I was using Elmer's or something like that. To... How much of a deal with so? Now we're not going to put a banner or anything on these guys. These are just kind of uh, Scottish mercenary types that just went over there. Ireland. Okay, now, so we've got these eight guys. Let's make sure that they sit, they stand somewhat flush. You don't want a guy that's that's teetering over because what happens is when I go and glue these guys down, I don't want to have to, I want to be able to move them over here to the end and they just dry on their own, not worry about them toppling over. And it looks like we did a pretty good job with that. Okay, now, the fun part. All right, so let's divvy these guys up. In camera centered here, okay. All right, so we've got eight guys. So let's divvy these guys up. So we've got uh, poses. Let's 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 divide these guys by poses. So we've got this pose. Hello. We got this pose. These guys that have this helmet that looks very similar to a uh, almost like a, a a Sassanid type cap. So we've got two of those, and then with the upright pikes, we have one, two, three. And then we got three of these guys with the um, padded jackets pressing forward. All right. Okay, so. These two are exactly the same. It's the same figure. They just have a different shield. So, hello. So we're going to put these two on two different stands for sure. Okay. These two are the same stand with two different shields. This is a light colored shield and this one of the two is the light colored shield. So we're going to put this light one with the dark one and this dark one with the light one. Now we don't know where they're going to be on the stand yet, but you know. Now this one is another upright, so we, just, we don't know whether he's which one he's going to be on. Here is a reddish color shield, okay? And you can already tell that this guy's got some red on him, and he does as well. So we don't need to add more red to that stand. So he's going to go over here on this one, okay? I'm not worried necessarily about the positions of them just yet. Now, the, this is a dark color and a light color one. This is another dark, so let's add a medium one over here, and then let's add this dark one here, and then just add the green one there. Now, let's see what that looks like right off the bat. Okay, let's set them on their side here with color-wise. So we got green, two reds, and kind of a thing rolled about is that all the blues are over here. All right, so how do we fix that? All right, so we can just take this pose that's an upright one, And replace it with say let me think it's not horrible I mean I'm, I'm overthinking it it's not not really that important Let's see what do we got here we got blonde red red blonde 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 red brown I'm actually okay with the way they are I'm actually okay with the way they are. Um, the only catch is going to be how they're going to mesh. Okay. And I have a feeling that I'm going to have to push them towards the back of both of them. So let's kind of set that out now. Okay. We got one here. Obviously, it's the guys pushing forward that are the issue. And I didn't have enough guys where I could just, I could do everybody, everybody with a, um, oh, well, it would help if I did this in view, wouldn't it? Okay. Um, I didn't have enough of where I could just put it, get a bunch of upright guys because that would work better. So let's just take a look at how that's going to work. Now, let's take a blade guy and push the blade guy up against him. And it actually meshed pretty good. It's going to be easier to get these guys to get one behind the other than the soloil work fine. How about some of these uh, Russian? 
Russian spearmen. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Okay. That's good. Now, let's see if we can get these guys to mesh in with them, within the, themselves. Uh, let's see. we got a red guy on this end. Du, du, du. Let's do one change. These are both upright guys, so it should, shouldn't be an issue. Let's move him here and him here. And then him here. We've got this guy upright, so let's put him over here in, say, the second position. We want to figure all this stuff out before you mix the epoxy and it's drying and it's you know and you're and you're chasing that down. Now, if I had glued them like that, they actually mesh just fine together. And I'm not sure if they'll work the other way around, but I'm not worried about it. Let's grab a tweezer here. Push these guys towards the back. I think that'll actually be just fine. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm really pretty happy with that. Okay, that's what we're gonna roll with. So, we're gonna take uh, one of these uh, pieces of, thank you, one of these pieces of cardboard that have been abused. So rip off another piece and get our gluing stuff, which we use two-part epoxy. We use this DevCon, lasts forever. And let's get our little mixing stick. We don't need this blade guy anymore. Oh, we yeah, we don't want to move those guys because what will happen is, is I'm going to pick up guys and I'm going to drop them right where they are, or at least close, because this is the, I'd like to do, this is five minute epoxy and I'd like to finish this relatively quick. I don't want to have to mix another batch. It's just a waste of time. Okay, so. Oh, this stuff is stinky. I don't like using the syringes where you mix the two things together because invariably you end up having to squeeze more one side or the other. And that happens every darn time. Which is the stinky one? What's this one? This is the clear, this is the resin. It's the hardener that's stinkier. Come on. And it doesn't have to be all that precise. I think you can be off by probably 20%. It would still harden just fine. All right, and 
then all we're going to do is take the glasses off so we can see. All we're going to do is pick the guy up and put him right back where he was. So we're going to start with this guy. Boom. You can just dip him right there in the bottom. I'm going to make sure that stuff doesn't drip over any of the other figures. And I'll move him as far back as I'm comfortable with while I'm at it. And this guy right next to him. This guy here, he's got his, he's got his pike upright, so it's not much of, a, of an issue. I don't want all the. Other. I want a mixture of the two things. Okay, so that's done. So let's just do the same thing with these guys. This epoxy is kind of goopy. So you want to make sure when you put it down, you let it give it time to retract because you don't want any of these drippings to go over one of the other figures after you spent this much time on it. Yeah, see, it's going to allow us to tinker with them a little bit and put him down as well. I like that. I've thought about possibly upping it to like a 15 minute epoxy, but there's some figures, especially the mounted ones, that you want to make sure that you've got some time to um, to adjust them. Uh, you you want some time uh, to them to harden up a little bit so they don't topple over. And that happens sometimes, not that frequently, but all right. Uh, it's going to give us some time here to adjust these guys. So let's take a look at these. And make sure. Any adjustments that we need to do, like this guy over here, let's move him over a little bit, give him a little bit more breathing room. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and take these guys and push them to the, towards the back. Push them towards the back. Push this guy. Well, that guy's not, not the issue. Okay, now, how does that, how does that fit in here? Okay, good. Can we move any of these guys further towards the back? <coughs> All right. Is everybody kind of facing forward? Yeah, somewhat. All right, this guy needs to be adjusted. And of course, side to side isn't going to be an option, a problem. Oh, hello. Is it going to be a, aha. See, not everything goes perfect all the time. No big deal. Side to side shouldn't be an issue. Meshing wise. Now, I'm not worried about if these guys can't be in the front. It's funny, this is the guy that seems to be the biggest troublemaker is this one here. And he's an upright pike, it's because it's, he's at a funky angle. No, he's okay there. All right, let's move this. Where's our tweezer? Let's move this guy over a little bit. And let's take him and give him a little bit more breathing room. You know, if I move him forward and I move him over, now this guy's got more space to work with. That looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Now, just for yucks, we're going to see if I can flip them and it's not an issue. Hot damn, it works even better. With every single combination of people that they're facing. But they need to work with themselves because they're almost always going to be backing themselves up. So that's the important thing. You know, does this work with the blade? 
Well, we're not going to be fighting these blades. It works better with the other one. So we've got a green guy. I'll make sure that the green guy is almost always in the lead. You know, and it makes sense. There's two figures with the there's two figures in this stand with the uh, with the pikes up. They'll work better. Okay, there you have it. That's how I do it. It's a little bit more challenging with uh, with the pikes than uh, other units. Uh, obviously, skirmishers. You don't have to worry about them at all. You got lots of space for them to to deal with. Um, you know, so. Anyhow, that's how I do it. So these guys are just going to sit over here and and dry for the time being. Okay, now, as we were, I'll move these guys off, make sure I don't get this epoxy crap somewhere else. And then we'll let that dry. It's five minute epoxy. We'll let that dry a little later. And uh, that'll end up getting the Liquitex treatment with the, um, with the ground coverage. So there won't be a lot of space to put little rocks in there. We'll find a way to put a couple in there. All right, let me see if I can get away with doing something. Um, can I do this? Mm, I better not. I better not. I better not do that. We'll leave this plenty. I don't want to. I don't want to minimize this and then look at email and see where the bloody hell Scottish knights are. They're not technically Scottish knights only for the Scots. They're kind of uh, just ones that I I liked and thought that were appropriate for the period. And we're gonna have extras because hell, we only need three three of them, and we may only need two of them because one of them, if I decide to use as a, a flag bearer dude, I've got other flag bearer dudes I don't need to worry about. But two of them for sure will be worry. And maybe I just need to have a couple of beers and not worry about when they come in. How that? Well, I won't get any painting. I got to do that at a point where I know I don't want to do any more painting. Okay. All right, so Mr. Irish Light Horseman here. I could put this back. Uh, what's this? What's this? What's this? Nothing. Okay. I don't like things popping up on my phone and not knowing what they are. No, this is the wrong brush. This is the one that's a little bit more frayed than the other one. That one's almost getting ready to be uh, relegated to doing less exciting things. This guy's got a deformed foot. It's like an elephant stepped on it. Um, 
here that it's drying really quick. That or the fan, but I'm not turning the fan off. I didn't come here to suffer while I'm painting, sorry. Not my idea of a good time. Yeah, I don't think we need to paint eyes on this guy. I think we got away with it. Take the same color, we're going to a little bit of white to it. new chats. There are six people being bored to death right now. I apologize that this is boring. Hopefully you're working on your hobby stuff at the same time. That's what I would be doing. That's what I would be doing. Actually, this keeps me from watching something distracting while I'm doing this. So, Trying to keep me from... Uh, watching any kind of programming that would just distract me. I'll sit here and just look at, it, look at it, and then the next thing you know, my paint dries, and I have to keep remixing new paint, so. come back to the to the face to bring it up another level when we move on to the next stage so okay let's um all right what are we going to do next we're going to do next so what color is he do we want light colored javelin i think so i think we want to do a light colored javelin i've got some brown here so we're going to work with that let's use this um Good old rocky sand. Good old, good old rocky sand. this javelin like so Gee, 
Hey. She ready? I thought you were going to come out at 1 o'clock. Oh. Okay. That'll work. All right. Well, we'll wrap this up then and uh, catch next time. And uh, got some movie watching to do. So, All right, folks. Well, uh, you know, don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, we'll have some pictures of these Scots guys when, uh, when we get them up there. So uh, they're almost ready for the uninteresting uh, phase of uh, putting the, uh, the basing material on them. But uh, we'll catch you guys next time. We'll see you later. Happy painting.